Hey everyone, let's learn how to quickly create a cool water shader inside the Blender, which is gonna not only look pretty good, but also it's gonna run fast and it's not gonna cause your scene to lag. So, without any long intros, let's begin. So first thing I'm gonna do is obviously import my world where I'm gonna have some water. So here I have a second world imported, where I moved it into a different collection. And if you watch my beginner tutorial series part 2, then you already know how to import worlds. If you don't know how to do that, then the video will be in the description. If you already know how to import the worlds, and if you all know how to use the MC Pro to prep materials, let's continue. So here I'm gonna select my water, and if I left click on my water and then press on G to move, you can see that every water in my scene is gonna move. So basically it's one big chunk, one big block. So first thing I'm gonna do is, before I set up any materials, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the water and then press on tab to go inside the edit mode. You can also use this menu to go inside the edit mode. By default, you might be in the object mode and you should click this and then go inside the edit mode. Now, as soon as I enter the edit mode and you should probably have the same is you can see we have a lot of faces here. So faces are these squares which make up the object. And in this water, for this water shader we're gonna be making, we don't really need these, these much faces. So the water is gonna be like this flat plane almost. It's not gonna need a lot of faces like this. So if we keep those faces and if we add our water shader, the scene is, is gonna become pretty laggy. So we need to get rid of these faces. Now, in order to demonstrate what these faces do with the performance of the scene, I'm gonna click on this overlays and then I'm gonna turn on statistics. Now I'm gonna press on tab and then deselect the water. And then here you can see the number of vertices and triangles. We have thousands of vertices and triangles over here. And then if I select my water, you can see I have 59,000 triangles here. And if you don't know what vertices are, is if I click on tab, go inside my edit mode, these points, these dots are basically vertices, which make up one object. Then if I click on two on my keyboard, or if I click here, I'm going to go inside the edge selection mode. And then here we have edges. And then if I click on three or then click here, I'm going to have faces. So the object consists of basically vertices, edges, and faces. And the more faces and vertices we have in the scene, the heavier our scene becomes. So it's our job to basically reduce it and make it as less as possible. So right now we have 59,000 triangles and then 113,000 vertices and 29,000 faces on our water. It's almost 30,000 actually. So if I click on tab, first thing I'm going to do before I set up my shader is I'm going to press on A to select all the faces. Then I'm going to click on M and then merge by distance. Now, if you didn't see that, I'm going to turn on my screencast key so you can see what I'm clicking. I'm going to do control Z. Now I'm going to press on H, select everything again, press on M, and then press on by distance. Now, as you can see, we merged 69,242 vertices. Now, as you can see from here, the vertice number decreased by a lot, which is going to help our scene run faster in the future. And now the last thing I want to do is, since I have all of my faces selected, if you don't, press on A to select everything. I'm going to press on X, and then scroll down here, and then click on limited dissolve. If you click this, it's going to delete all the faces on the inside, but it's still going to keep the shape of the outside. Now, as you can see on the outside, the water still has the shape. It didn't lose its shape, anything. Now, this is basically, if you know 3D modeling, it's basically one giant angle. Like, the geometry is pretty messed up. It's not the best model. And if I show this to someone who does 3D modeling, they're probably going to call the cops. But in this case, we need water to be this one flat surface without any polygons on the inside, without any faces. And as you can see, we decreased, we decreased the faces and vertices by a lot. Like we had 59,000 here, 100,000 here, but we decreased it by a lot. And this is going to help our scene run faster after we add the water shader. So after we did that, after we merged the vertices and then after we did the limited dissolve, now we can go inside the shading workspace. So make sure you're in the material view or if you go inside the shading mode, you're already going to be in the material view. Now make sure you have your water selected. Then I'm going to expand this menu. I'm going to scroll out and then here I have my notes. Now, this, these notes were created by MC Prep when I clicked on Prep Materials. Or if you use the MC Blend icon, if you saw my video, you're probably going to have almost the same materials here. Now, we're only going to need the principal BSDF and material output for now. So I'm going to left click drag and delete these two new notes. I'm going to press on Control X or you can also press on the Delete key. Now I'm left with the principal DBSDF node. So I'm quickly going to set up a very, very simple water shader. If you're afraid of notes, don't be afraid of notes. Watch this tutorial and you'll be fine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Control T. So first I'm going to select the principal BSDF node and then click on Control T. And then as you can see, I created three new nodes. If you 
didn't have this happen for you, you're going to press on Edit, Preferences, go to Add-ons, and then search for Node Wrangler Add-on. And then make sure you have the Node Wrangler Add-on enabled. If you don't have the Node Wrangler and Add-on enabled, the Control T method is not going to work here. So after I selected my principal BSDF and I click on, clicked on Control T, I created these new nodes. Now, first thing I'm going to do is we're not going to need the image texture for this water, so I'm going to press on X to delete. And second thing what I'm going to do is take the object of the texture coordinate and connect it to the mapping. Instead of UV, we're going to use the object coordinates because UVs use the faces. And since our faces are messed up here, since we deleted all the faces, we're not going to be using that. If we used our object node, it's going to be all good. So now that we have these nodes set up, I'm going to go over here and then press on Shift A and then search for noise texture. Press on enter or left click to confirm. Now take the vector of the mapping node and plug this inside the vector of the noise texture. Change the noise texture from 4D to from 3D to 4D. Then move the principal BSD off on the right side. And then we're going to create another node here. But I'm going to take the color of the noise texture and connect this inside the normal of the principal BSDF node. Now click on Shift A and then search for Bump node. And then I'm going to place the bump node between the noise texture and principal BSDF. If I drag this between this line, the line is going to become bright. I'm going to left click and then it's going to be dragged between those lines. Now, this is all the nodes we're going to need. We're not going to create any more new nodes. So we're only going to mess around with the settings of these nodes. Now, first thing we need is take the color and then plug this inside the height instead of the normal, because that's going to give us the better results of the water. So after we plug this inside the height, we're already ready to start messing around with the settings. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out and have a better look at my scene. I'm inside the material view and I'm using EV, but you can also use cycles or to preview your settings. Now, I'm going to click on principal BSD of node and change the color to something like light blue. I'm going to turn up the value and then maybe turn on the saturation slightly. And I'm going to turn up the roughness slightly like roughness. Uh, if you turn up the roughness, the material is going to be rough. It's not going to be reflective. If you turn this down, it's going to be reflective. But we don't need this to be all the way to zero. It's going to be almost zero, but not all the way. Now, another thing I want to do is I'm going to click on transmission. If you're using Blender 3, then you should already see the transmission value here. But in Blender 4.0 updates, the principal BSDF node is more compact and you need to expand these menus. So I'm going to expand the transmission menu and then move the weight all the way up. So the water is going to become more transmission, more transmissive and more reflective. And that's the correct setting to have right here. Now, another thing I want to do is mess around with the bump node. So the bump node right now is all way too strong. So I'm going to click on the strength and then turn this down slightly. I'm also going to click on the distance and then turn this down slightly as well. And now I'm going to start messing around with the noise texture. So first thing I'm going to do is mess around with the scale. Now I like to use something like 0.4 or 0.3 because it gives like more wavy, giant wavy, oceany type of feeling. I don't even know what I'm saying, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to turn this down to something like 0.4 or 0.3. Any setting will work, but it's up to you. I like to leave the detail almost on default, but sometimes I might turn it up to about 3, 3.1 or something like that. Uh, I like to turn on the roughness slightly. And then I like to leave these two settings by default. And then since we switch the noise texture from 3D to 4D, we get this W value. Now, if I click on this W, left click and drag, you can see that my water is going to start to move. And in the future, after we save the water and we finish setting up the seed, we're going to be able to animate the water pretty easily. Now, this water is almost done. Now, the last thing we need to do is preview this inside the render view. And I want to say that it's going to look very good in cycles. And you can also use this in Eevee. And if you're going to use it in Eevee, you should enable one or two settings to make it look better and make some cool reflections. So if you watch until the end, I'm going to show you those tricks as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to cycles and then go inside the render view. But before I do that, I'm going to click on Control S to make sure that my scene is saved in case Blender turns off and I lose my progress. So right here, I have the sky imported. I created the sky using the MC Blend add-on, which is a new add-on made by Aspirata. I already made a video about it. If you haven't seen it, then be sure to check it out in the description. So I'm quickly going to turn up the time to get a daytime scene, something like that. But if you don't have the MC Blend, what you can do is basically go inside the world and then I can disable this world if I want to. Then click on new. You can click on color and create a sky texture or you can create an environment texture as well and import HDR. 
We're doing this just to preview the water. It's not going to be our final result, our final render. And then I'm going to rotate the sun to get a better view. And now as you can see, this is cycles. Our water is pretty cool. It's pretty reflective. If we move this, it's going to be animated. So by default, if I switch this to EV, you can see that I lose all of my reflections and it doesn't look as realistic. So what I can do basically is, first of all, go to ambient occlusion and enable ambient occlusion. Then you should enable bloom. And then the last thing you should enable that's going to make your water pretty cool and reflective is the screen space reflections. So if I check this, you can see that I get pretty cool reflections and you can make this water work inside EV as well. Now, cycles will look better, but it also works in EV, so feel free to go with that as well. Now, the last thing we need is go again, go back inside the material view and we need to animate this water, which is pretty easy to do. So make sure you are inside your timeline, turn on the auto keyframing, go to keying and then changes to location and rotation. You can change this to only location if you want. So I want to press this W value. So by default, it might be zero. So let's have it at zero. I'm going to hover over this and then press on I. Or you can also right click and then press on insert keyframe. Now let's go to somewhere like frame 200 and then move this to something like 15 for example, but feel free to play around. 15 or 20 should be fine. And then as you can see, uh, if I select this node, which I have it selected right now, I'm going to see the both keyframes which I created. But if I play this back, it's going to have the Bezier curve. So it's going to start up slow, speed up and then slow down towards the end, which we don't really want. So I'm going to press on A to select all the keyframes, hover over the timeline, press on A to select all the keyframes, press on T, and then set this to linear interpolation. And now the water will have more constant movement and it's going to look a lot better. And the last thing we need is obviously we need our water to move infinitely throughout the animation. So I'm going to again hover over my timeline, press on Shift E, Shift E, and then set this to linear extrapolation. As you can see, it has the Shift E icon here as well, Shift E shortcut. Let's click this. And then if I play my animation past frame 200, it's going to go on forever. As you can see, I have this pretty cool water animation. If I go inside my rendered view, it's going to look a lot better, obviously, if I change this to cycles. The reason why I'm not doing that a lot in this tutorial is because, as you can see, the playback is pretty rough. I don't have like the strongest PC. I can turn up the samples for you guys. I can even click on denoise. Let's see how it looks with the denoising. Yeah, it, it takes too much time to load. I need a better GPU. I know that. So I can just go to material view and then preview the water this way. And then, yeah, these are the basic settings you need. First, you need to unsubdivide your water, remove all the polygons. Then you need to create a simple node setup and then mess around with different settings. And we can also add different nodes here at different effects. But this is a pretty good starting point. And then you can, again, mess around with settings, mess around with details, scale. You can also make this stronger, more bumpy. And it's really up to you what you're going to do after that. So I just showed you the basic settings and you have all the creative freedom you want. Make sure you have this uh, roughness almost at zero and that you have the transmission high and then you should be fine. One cool thing about this water shader is that it's not really heavy on the scene. Since we don't have too many faces, since it's like one giant face, it doesn't have too many polygons. As you can see, I'm playing back pretty smoothly. Like I don't have the strongest PC and still it's playing back pretty fast if I have inside the material view. Like in the past when I created my water shaders, it was laggy even inside the material view. But right here, it allows me to preview it faster, change the settings, and then play around and then see what I like. So hopefully it does the same to you. It runs pretty fast for you as well. So yeah, this is how you can easily create a water shader. Let me know which tutorial you guys want to see next. And also, if you want to see how I created a Minecraft animation in 24 hours and how I was challenged to do it and how I passed this challenge, then be sure to check out this video right here. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.